Good morning, everybody. Hello from Switzerland. My name is Holger Kast. Uh, I'm leading you through this webinar with uh, Professor Dr. Konstantin Bonse with a, a very um, hot and interesting topic. Is the digi digitalization really simplifying dental implantology? Um, I think we, we are um, having a very uh, interesting presentation with uh, Dr. Konse. Um, we from TRI, we are very, very sure that uh, the digitalization uh, simplifies our uh, life uh, very much. And uh, we are working since uh, quite a, a, a time on the first digital implant, which we call the matrix connection, uh, the matrix. And um, the matrix is going to be the future of implantology. And uh, we are going to eliminate the abutment and also the cement, the cement with this technology. This technology, this implant connection um, is based on the technology of digital, digital workflows like CAD CAM workflows. Uh, we implemented all this um, knowledge and also uh, new materials uh, into a new techniques like 3D printing and so on into this uh, um, implant, uh, um, in this new implant. And um, I think this is going to be very interesting um, when we're going to launch it uh, at the end of this year. But um, um, this uh, is not the topic, the metrics is not really the topic. I think uh, Professor Fonse is going to explain a little bit something because um, um, Professor Fonse in the university in camps in um, Austria, uh, it's very much involved in, in, in this uh, project. And I would like to give the word uh, now to Dr. Uh, Professor Fonse. Uh, but before, I just want to explain the rules a little bit of this webinar. Uh, you see on the right side, there's a question mark field. You please um, write your questions during the presentation into this uh, field. And I uh, try to give them or pass them to, to Professor Fonse uh, during the um, session. And at the end, we have also a question and answer session so uh, please um, introduce yourself. I pass you the right for your uh, presentation, um, Professor Fonse, uh, and um, uh, go ahead, please. Hello. Yeah, I will take over from here. Um, hopefully okay. this is working fine for you as well. So minimizing. One second. Uh, now, it, now it should. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, I hope you can all see me clear and see my presentation, starting with the first slide. My name is Professor von See. I'm working at the Danube Private University. I'm the digital field, which uh, in our university involves every field of digitalization, not only prosthetics, but even orthodontics, prosthetics, and of course, implantology. So this is a little bit what we want to discuss on today. Why? Because we found out that a lot of you, a lot of dentists in the field have some presentiments about digitalization as such. One main reason, of course, is, and this brings me to my first slide, the speed of innovation. I tried to cover up a little bit of uh, what the speed is like in this field. Yeah, so we have computers. So what is a computer today? Where it was, was it some years ago? So thinking of floppy disks, yeah, 30 years ago, even one megabyte, which is nothing today, yeah, it was not easy to store and it took time and the screens, they were green screens flickering, giving you a hard time working on that. But things were really evolving fast. And then we had the second time where storage capacities were not a huge problem anymore. And this is the time where the computerization was involved in other fields as well, which is dentistry. This is the time where the first intraoral scanners were introduced, the first mills were introduced, and this is where, especially in prosthetics, the first ideas came up. Today, the speed is even faster than any time. So we have the mobile phones, which have 
a lot of gigabyte storage capacity, but even new frequencies for transmitting data in fast time. The light sources, the cameras included in this mobile phones are absolutely enormous. And even, we will talk about this a little bit later, 3D scanners and face scanners are coming up more and more, giving us really new opportunities. And this is where I want in this connected world to give you a little overview, to just show you where are we today and especially where we are heading to, not only in dentistry, but even involving this in the combination of dentistry to dental technician to data merge and connecting all these on wire or online internationally today. To this specific topic, this enormous speed of innovation, of course, brings us new techniques or even old techniques, which are somehow renewed. Let's look at the two different aspects when it comes to precision in implantology. The first one is the so-called navigated surgery. The navigated surgery is a life procedure where a, a tracking device, which is a camera, in fact, or many cameras, are detecting the position of a tool, of an implant, of a bird, while you operate on these patients. And these techniques are very much going in the endodontic operational fields in robotics. And maybe you've seen it last year, it has been, let's say, renewed and newly introduced in the dental field as well. So, navigated surgery means that we have a tracking device and starting on the upper left, the tracking device was, let's say, slow. The detectors were enormous, they were huge, and it took a long, long time implementing the system compared to a surgical guide. Today, there's a small change. As you can see in the course of time, we are getting more and more to this field where we have smaller tracking devices. The detection is much faster and you can, it's very easy to implement these nowadays to the patient's individual situation. The next step from here might be, and I'm a little bit concerned, but technically it's evolving, is robotic operation. So as you can see here, last year there were introductions about robotics and implantology and the first implant was placed with a total robotic system. So a robot working on a patient, which is somehow new in our field, but the precision and the innovation speed is enormous here. So it's very, very interesting to see the outcome, but how is the patient's correlations to the systems? The patient's acceptance is very low. So people, even though they know that the robotic system is very precise technically, they want to be treated by dentists. And I, I really can only agree on that. So the humanity and the human factor in implantology will stay a long, long time. We don't know for the next centuries, but nowadays, the technical application is a feasibility technical application, which might someday evolve in our field, but not today, not yet. And due to the patient's individual concerns, really not now. So what we have to look at still, and here is the main draft for today, for you today in your daily practice, is the so-called guided surgery. So, in the co correlation, we have the navigated surgery, which means a real-time tracking, a very high technical sensitivity of the system, and we have the so-called guided surgery, where we have helping tools, which we can use 
in our operation, which become much more available and much faster and, of course, cheaper. Nowadays, giving you a helping hand. And this is what we mainly will talk about as it is evolving today in your daily practice. And the question is, will you start today or tomorrow? Just to sum this up, the real-time navigation implantation today have a higher cost, especially in the investment. So you have to invest in the training and the people and of course in the machine. And so it's mainly universities doing research on that, but it's not out in the fields in the whole system. The comparison from precision when we compare these from navigation to surgical guides is statistically the same. We are in a sub-millimeter range of the precision which we can aim for. But one advantage is that intraoperatively we can do adaptions, which is in endoscopic operations very, very important when we operate on guts or something. But in our field, as we mainly operate on bone and we have a prior CBCT or CT scan, this is not so mandatory. So this advance is somehow a little bit correlated in our field. And just for today, these navigated, these real-time navigated systems are more times consumptive compared to the guided surgery, especially when it comes to chair time. So the patient in the office, the patient in the chair time is much more reduced using a surgical guide to correlate it to a navigated system. When we talk about surgical guides or even navigated implantation and we ask our colleagues what's your main issue about the system then it's a predictability the main issue which is mostly addressed is the predictable outcome the reduction of chair time and how can i have my logistics so i know exactly which implant to take where to place how to plan my prosthetics and this is one of the main aims, which is even to quality management system, a very huge advantage. But first things first. Let's start in, let's say, the cause of time. What was the first guides I personally used? And maybe I look that old as I feel sometimes, but maybe I'm not so. What was my first guides I used? It was something like this. And um, of course, this is a guide as well, and is a guide on a plasma model. Yeah, uh, looks a little bit a little strange even to me when I prepared this lecture for you. But um, it was totally prosthetic driven. So we had plaster models, we looked for occlusion, and we tried to really put the perfect place not involving three dimensional CT systems. So it was only for the optimal situation prosthetically, but we did not know that day whether the bone situation, the bony situation was perfect underneath. So we had a combination with 2D radiographs, measuring systems 2D, but really starting on having the perfect prosthetics. And I will come to this over and over again. It was the first idea of backwards planning. Backwards planning is so mandatory. We're just doing implant for prosthetics. Never, never forget. As I talk to my patients, I talk a lot about implantology and they don't get a word because they talk about prosthetics. They are not interested in implants at all. They're interested, how can this be restored? How can my situation be restored prosthetically? And so this was not only my idea, but it's always the patient's idea. They are looking for a healthy prosthetic restoration. But as time goes by and we had a lot of new opportunities, especially the CBCT time was erasing and it's getting forward and forward that day, we had surgical guides available. And these surgical guides 
we have to differentiate, especially when we talk about precision. We have a surgical guide which has only a pilot drill, which is tooth supported, mucosa supported, or even toothless with bone supported structures. And as this is sometimes really mixed up, I will try to just a little bit explain about these different topics, the advantage and disadvantages to summarize it. Starting with pilot drill. A pilot drill means that only the first burr, the pilot, the first burr is guided. So why? And the question is very easy to ask and very simple to answer. Because the point of entry is very, very well defined. So we have the perfect position for prosthetics, for angulation, to get an idea of the prosthetic situation about possible angulations. And with the additional burrs, we are only widening, so we have a little bit deflection and inaccuracy statistically about the situation. But still, compared to non-guided system, it's a very, very accurate system. It has the advantage that it's very easy to use. And then, then we try to find out about the learning curves with our students, there is no learning curve. So you can start right away. You don't need a special training. You don't need a special kit or something. You can start right away having a pilot drill starting first point, first day. In a more accurate system where it might be necessary due to a very, very short span due to a very aesthetic situation, which is complicated, we have the so-called guided surgery implant bed preparation, meaning that every single drill is guided and there is even a depth control involved, yes, but of course you need some additional material. You have a very high precision, so you really got to consider this to do with every step or even with the last bird, with every single bird, there are a lot of options. In the end, you do a freehand implantation. And this is contrary to what we call a full guided implantation. A full guided implantation is even the implant inserted through the sleeves. And I personally, Tried this sometimes, honestly, and you can see a picture of mine, but I don't like it anymore. Why? Because when I burr through these holes, I always have some kind of particles in the sleeves remaining. And when I try to insert the implant, I don't want to touch it because becoming a clean surface, a really clean, not mainly clean, but clean surface, sterile clean surface and then touching the sleeves where i have some remnants of my drilling i don't know i'm not so sure about that and especially when the implant bed preparation is done and considered slow calm and the way it should work with every guided drill i don't see many deflections placing the implants not in a statistical field in the field of let's say Research may be not even there, but to daily practice, this is not mandatory to me. Moreover, we need special adapters, so it's time consumptive. So it's not my favorite way of doing this today. I tried this a lot, but especially when it comes to molars, practically, I think it's not so easy to perform. But this is my, only my personal position. So, Talking about surgical guides, sum this up. We have a lot of different surgical guides available, meaning pilot drill starting today, no additional materials, easy, very, very uh, cheap. Let's put it this way today. And uh, you don't need the additional material or training. Whereas when you need the perfect position, guided implantation with additional material with a very strict protocol, but training needed brings you to a very high precision. What does it mean? In our university as a specialty, our students are doing dental implants themselves. 
and over 80% are with the surgical guide. Why? Because the students learn. It's not only having the surgical guide at hand, which gives you a high security, but even more, it brings you some aspects of understanding of three-dimensional prosthetical planning virtually prior to having the, yeah, the, the, the patient involved. So you have a lot of time for teaching, you have a lot of time for understanding, to raise questions, to understand the situation, and this is very favorable for a learning curve. To really answer the question, is digitalization simplifying our life today? We have to look at the workflow because there's the huge change of the workflow, which we have today. And we get to ask the question, what is the workflow like? Why is it so complicated for some people having a surgical guide. And some years ago, and this is a case of mine, um, which is, let's say, a little bit older, yeah, we had a surgical guide produced, as you can see here, with special adapters necessary during the CBCT. So we had to produce a splint with special adapters. Then the patient had to go with these splints in the CBCT, it was not, if it was not perfect position, it will not work. So then with a splint, yeah, you have to plan the implant position, then with the with different system, but just one thing, system to introduce here. Yeah, the sonic so-called gonics table. Yeah, you have to correlate this three-dimensional situation and positioning, and moreover, especially the combination of the model scan due to the CBC scan and the matching is one of the highest inaccuracies we had that day. In the end, we, we got a one, surgical guide. Excuse me, we have one first question from yeah. Azerbaijan, from Dr. Chan. What role will augmented uh, reality play in future? Augmented reality? Are perfect. Uh, thank you so much. I will come to that later because we will talk about augmented reality. Absolutely, that's mandatory. But um, um, please put this question a little bit back because uh, I will talk about this. So we had some surgical guides which were delivered. It took two to three weeks until they were delivered. So planning was really a, a, a field that day. And um, this was the workflow. So producing a reference splint, then having a CBCT with this reference splint, virtual implant positioning after matching, which took a long time, and designing the surgical guy, the dental lab had to do the reference drilling and then it was produced. But even that day, somehow it was possible. Yeah, this is the clinical situation. You see this, let's say, a little bit clumsy, uh, bulky surgical guide. Yeah, but it worked the, the way and um, it took some time. It was very, very cost intensive, put this way, very, very expensive to produce, especially compared to today, but it was possible. So what changed comparing these to today's manufacturing processes and the workflow? Today, we don't have to put a splint prior to any kind of CT or CBCT. So any CBCT or CT scan we can use today for our planning, our dental planning. And especially in the CBCT, the dose is reduced a lot today, even though the accuracy is raised. So this is really perfect. So we have a very low dose very high accurate CBCTs available mostly and maybe even CT scans, whatever you like. And we can use any of these scans to have the implants placed. Nerve detection today is automized or semi-automized. This is very, very helpful, especially in the mandible, yeah, where you don't have to look for it, but in colored it's implemented and backwards planning, backwards planning, backwards planning. Even this is semi automized today. So there's a prediction, there's the option, the software is showing you where's the ideal implant position caused 
to the prosthetic position which you are aiming for. And this, of course, helps you to protect neighboring structures the best, and maybe even showing you distances which are shown in the field uh, that you have a lot of options here. We can, of course, detect the and control the axis of the implant, and especially from the logistics point, it's very easy to perform even on a click. You can have on demand delivery for things you need yeah um <clears throat> so you can uh, it can be sent to you directly and with the merging of the intraoral scan the model scan to the cbct or ct is very much optimized today and is very accurate even if we have scattering from metal artifacts but even the design a lot of change there we have so-called visualization sleeves where we can see if the surgical guide is really fitting on the intraoral situation and we have a lot of more options today for simplifying but even using surgical guides in many different ways not only for implants but for root tip resections even for endo today or for lateral windows performing a sinus lift procedure these are a lot of more options which we have today. Um, so yeah, we will see what's upcoming there if artificial intelligence or um, maybe even augmented reality gives us a helping hand here. And so we're asking ourselves because this is somehow still some work to do, what's the main benefit? And we did an investigation, especially when it comes to our students, when it comes to people who are not doing the first 100, but let's say the first 50 implants, the first 20 implants in their lives. So we try to find out when using a surgical guide compared to a non-surgic or a freehand drilling, how about the accuracy? How about the place you wanted to reach compared to the place you reached? And here we found, of course, a statistical um, variation. So surgical guide gives you the opportunity to be as precise as a person who has done 1,500 implants and more. So a very experienced person. And we have some more option here, meaning that surgical guides helps us to reduce chair time. This is one of the main advantages for anxious patients. So the patients asking how long will the operation procedure take? And the shorter it is, the better. So the patient do not want to sit there for one and a half hours with a big flap, but want to leave as early as possible. So we can reduce the chair time and make this minimally invasive. The less invasive our implant surgery is, so the fewer of raising a flap, the less operation, the less pain. We know that nociceptors are located in the periosteum. So when we do not raise a flap, then we have less pain. Now this is with a predictable outcome possible using surgical guides. When it comes to direct restoration, when it comes to the question, doctor, how fast can we place the prosthetics? We even have an advantage here because we reach a, a situation where we know the bone density in that position. And this gives us a very, very good prediction to say how and if this will be primary stable, aiming for the bony structures aiming for the bone density locally to 4C. And of course, when it comes to very difficult situations where we do not have enough space, let's say in the molar region, lower jaw after resorption, and we have to take shorter implants, every millimeter counts. So we have here an option to be very precise and harming fewer neighboring structures here. 
now it comes to a combination. The combination is, of course, backwards planning. So here we have a lot of tools virtually to place prosthetics and then adapt the situation of our implant to the prosthetics and not the other way around. So this, especially for the dental technician, is a really helping hand, but we can do other things with the surgical guides as well. So when we use a bone condenser, we have a lot of force which we can apply to the soft bone because we want to condense it. But here, for example, using a bone condenser with a surgical guide is really helping you to stay on track, to stay in the right axis and to have a very good correlation here. When we talk about changes, when we talk about evolving and innovation in our system and simplifying this or bringing this innovations in the daily clinics, put it this way, we have to see that especially in the last two or three years, a lot happened on the intraoral scanner market as well. You know that for a surgical guide, we need to have either a scanned model, which is we have to take an impression and then we have to have a model, a plaster model, and we have to digitize this. So three steps of the way with the intraoral scanner, a modern intraoral scanner, we have one scan ready, that's it. And a digitized module, which we directly can merge on the CBCT data set. 10 years ago, an intraoral scanner was taking about 8 to 12 pictures a second. Today we are 24 up to 45 frames or pictures per second. 45 pictures per second. Yeah, this means that with a modern scanner, the time for scanning, the intraoral time for scanning is reduced absolutely. So having a modern scanner doing a full arch well-trained takes you about, let's say, 25 to 35 seconds. That's it, yeah? Compared to times five to 10 years ago, where it really took two to three minutes at least to have an intraoral scan. So the ease of use, the simplifying, and of course, color, real color, which is very, very important when we come to talk to patients, not for the dental technician, they don't need that but talking to a patient, explaining the situation, showing what is technically feasible today, color and real color is really a big issue. And coming back to it, yeah, augmented realities and one of the fields is uh, artificial intelligence called AI, it is already implemented. So the first ideas are already implemented in scanners especially when it comes to margin detection, when it comes to color detection, differentiation from tooth to gum. There are already existing tools which are implemented in the software in the last two years, and it is enormously speeding up. So it will bring new ideas, new possibilities of visualization, even in augmented reality, meaning that we can predict, that we can foresee the prosthetic situation after scanning right away. To make this even easier, and this is one, let's say, a new thing on the market, we want to have less steps than any day before. So one idea here, and I really like this idea, is having the implantation tray, the implantation adapter, which is a scan post directly. So when you try or when you place the implants, usually you have to put on with the ratchet the scan post and then release the scan post after which, which are two additional steps. If I have an adapter, which is a scan post already, then I can scan the intraoral situation directly and there is two steps which are lacking in modern dentistry. So making or simplifying our way because the modern scanner is, is capable of scanning metal parts, it's capable of detecting this and even matching this to the prosthetic restoration. 
And then we can directly go from that situation, so implant inserted, scan, and directly go to the CAD, so designing and manufacturing process. So there is, of course, the combination from chair-side milling and, of course, chair-side printing, which is becoming more and more optional and available today. In the question of print or drill, technically, we can drill a lot, even surgical guides, as you can see here, but it's very, very consumptive. It's, you have a lot of material which is wasted, which you pay for, and it takes a lot of maintenance time for the drills because drilling soft material or resin uh, is always a lot of cleaning time. Compared to printing, sorry, yeah, go for it, Holger. There's uh, one question um, uh, uh, from Spain. Would you invest uh, in an intraoral scanner um, now as a, a yes. private practice? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, why? Why? So the the prices are dropping, so um, they're a lot cheaper. Uh, of course, it has to be an open system, but you got to ask yourself. Or there is in intraoral scanners, there are different um, scales or or prices, price levels, and you got to ask yourself, what do I want to use it for? Explaining to the patient the situation. I need color right away. Or working with my dental technician, doing surgical guides more internally. So I don't need real color. It should look like a tooth, but not real color. And then you get for a very cheap price already a very good running system, which might, of course, not work on a total arch restoration today. But how often do you really do a total arch restoration with six implants? Is it really worth buying the very expensive scanner? Or how many dentists are working with a scanner? A second question. So how often can you use this a day? If you're in a clinic with six or eight persons, it will, of course, have a lot of options. If you're alone in your dental private clinic, it will take some more time. So there is no right or wrong, but get used to it now. They're getting better, absolutely, year by year. And so I would invest today, absolutely. So question, print or drill? Very simple to answer when it comes to surgical guides. Yeah, very simple for me because printing, the prices are dropping, dropping and dropping. The prices for a 3D printer six years from now was about 18 to 25,000 euros. Today, we are at about 3,500 euros. So, yeah, how, how much longer will you wait? So very, very fast now, even more precise. And what is more important, we have another option. We have more materials available, meaning we can print temporary crowns and now even introduced definite crowns. So we can print definite crowns today. I will stress this out because this is enormous. So we revolutionized our system. We have materials, resins to print. Very cheap, easy to perform. And we will see, we don't know about the long lasting results, but especially when it comes to temporary restorations, even from the aesthetic points, they're really good. So we have some more options here. We have printer or drilling. Drilling, especially in ceramics, still has its place. But when it comes to resin, no more. And even in ceramics, it's not on the market yet, but the first ideas of printing ceramics are quite good, but it will take some time. So. What is very important for everyone talking about the whole digitalization is the question of open or closed systems. When you have an open system, like a PLY or STL file, you can send it anywhere in the world and with every software you can go on. 
if you have a closed system. It has some benefits, especially when you have the whole system from one company because it's adapted to the system as itself, but you always have to reinvest. And if the prices are cheaper somewhere else, you cannot change. So it has no option. So you always have to go with the system and you have to stay to the system and stay on the system, let's say not forever, but nearly, because the investment is very high for a closed system. So open system means you can use any scanner, you can use any mill, you can use any printer. And this is really especially in the so fast evolving times of digital technologies, in my opinion, is one of the best options to do and most of the companies even offer it today. So very, very important. Answering this question, uh, of course, <clears throat> What is, uh, yeah, real color? Is real color possible? Is another step to take. When scanning, do we have to take the color? As far as I know, 3Shape is the only scanner which has real color, so the dental technician can work on this. But there are others upcoming with this idea. Uh, I don't know how they rel reliable they are today, but um, they are quite close, put it this way. Open system means that with every new evolving technologies, you're already on track, meaning data merging. So think about just an idea to print a total prosthesis or even an interim prosthesis. Technically, no problem. Are you on track? Absolutely. If you have an open system, you can start tomorrow because you can merge any data from any software to every situation, meaning that even with the upcoming techniques as you can see here that with a mobile phone yeah look at this right down here you use your mobile phone as a face scanner and see about your aesthetic situation merging orthodontics or prosthetics in your personal situation as a patient yeah even this is possible today and the patient can send this picture right away to you and define that or discuss it with you online and all this is possible having open software solutions so 3d printing online the internet of things is not ready yet but merging data and putting it all together by hand is possible and of course will bring out a new situation will bring out new opportunities which we might even not think of today so even augmented realities having this uh, question now answered hopefully brings you aesthetic results, which can even be, and this is something really new, video scoped. So it's not only static pictures of someone giving you a smile and then, okay, we can put on the smile like Photoshopping, but they can do in real time your mobile situation. So even your dynamic aesthetic situation, and then have with augmented reality merged this as your new smile, as your new aesthetics, your new prosthetics. So yes, yes we are very close to that. There's uh, just feeding this question from Peter Buchdar. Can you suggest which product uh, company has this phone patient scanning solution, please? Um, yes, I did because yeah. I found the newest version yesterday evening. Just give me a second. Um, 3D bullet, I have to look at this. Um, um, Bellos 3D. This is the one I, I used and this is, uh, there's even an, an import option to have this in ExoCAD. That's so, nice. uh, Okay, thanks. I cannot write it. Did you did you find it? Bellus 3D or uh, and sorry, the question. When I write type in the, the answer, is it is then, it visible? Uh, type, in, uh, type in the answer and then you can send it uh, to all yes. or private to the yes. but I know that there are different um so now hopefully this works. Uh this is the one I worked with already because it's importable in uh, ExoCut. Uh, but I know that for the iPhones, there are other solutions as well. 
um, which I don't I don't test it, but I've seen pictures. It's it's yeah. enormous. That is coming. It's. Uh, I tried it. I think it's a really good uh, tool to also work uh, with the dental technician uh, quicker yes. and um, uh, during the process of uh, prosthetic uh, procedure or um, guiding procedure. Yeah, but still, there's a lot upcoming, so uh, we will see how far we can let's say really go in the near future because it's becoming more and more. And yeah, um, yeah this brings me to the newer options in, in work-life balance. Yeah, meaning that everyone can take from everywhere over your data, uh, help you out, and even uh, people online log in your, to your computer, giving you a remote access or help you help, use a help desk to help you to find through this jungle and help you to have the best performance in your chair time dealing from patient to patient. But, of course, and there's still, let's say, not a drawback, but there's a necessity to change your team or even change your ideas or change the behavior in your team because you need someone who's very much affiliated to these techniques who works on these techniques and maybe even have learned this or is interested. So it's not as self-explaining today. It's not a, it's mostly a running system, but it has to be implemented first. And if it's implemented, then you have a successful long-term outcome. And especially when it comes to new ideas, when it comes to new possibilities and new options on the market, maybe just we get rid of abutments, just an idea, and we have a printable solution right away, and the printers are printing really fast today, and this will be even faster. You can offer something, what your colleagues cannot because you're not digitized. And then we have a USP, a unique selling point, so things are becoming possible, which are not possible today, and this is, of course, one of the aims which we still have not to go for a different direction, but to go for a different solution and being much faster here. So summing this up, especially where we are we today? <clears throat> Sorry, let me switch on this. Today, producing a surgical guide, producing even a prosthetic restoration prior to our implantology Chair time. We don't need a reference splint. We don't need a. We only need a CBCT. The virtual positioning still has to done to be done by hand. But this, in a few years, I'm totally sure it will change. The surgical guides are semi-automized, and we can print the final or even the temporary restorations, even chair time. And of course, this is. Uh, um, yeah. These are uh, new options, so we see to it and uh, very much looking forward because the speed is enormous. And to sum this up, in my personal opinion, I am totally sure, not only today, but especially in the near future, is that digitalization is simplifying digital dental implantology and even prosthetic restoration predictable in time in function and aesthetics and this will summarize my statement so thank you so much for your time thank you so much for being here with me and i uh, hope you enjoyed it i'm totally open to all the questions you have and um, hope that we have a nice discussion out now thank you so yeah. much thank you so much uh, for this uh, very interesting presentation I would like to go back to that uh, first question uh, about uh, uh, real augmentation uh, will play a role and you showed for example that the first slide with uh, the robotic placing an implant uh, is this changing uh, our our guided uh, technology completely will we have guided sleeves in the future i think this is implementing all this uh, type of question about um, uh, virtual reality yes. and, and <clears throat> Okay, so um, there are some there are some topics to address here, um, and this is a technical thing. The problem with all augmented reality intra orally is that we do not have enough light, and we will not overcome this problem with any technique today available. 
So the idea is today more and more to use intraoral scanners as a helping hand, sleeveless or positioning, but not to do this with, let's say, mobile cams or something from extra orally. So these are the things which are evolving already and which are coming more and more in our daily practice. One question, I think um, a big uh, topic, will 3D printing take over milling in the future? And Absolutely. When? No, no. <laughs> okay, first answer is very simple. Will it take over? Yes. Um, why? Because we, uh, with the modern 3D printer, uh, we need electricity. We do not need burrs, which are very expensive in a way. Um, and so the resins which we have are already, or put it in the bigger scope, the industry, meaning automotive, is interested in what dentistry is doing because we are so precise. So there's a huge investment in technologies in dentistry, only to see how precise can we print with this resins, which know the dentist for 40 years now because it's the same resins which we use for resin fillings. Yeah. And so this is where the big push is in. And of course, with ceramics, we have to wait some more years. Just a prediction, don't take it for sure, but just a prediction, five to 10 years, um, because of color, because of long-term stability. There are some issues to address, but even the big industry is involved here. And so I say, yes, milling, will leave sooner or later. Uh, okay, then there is the next question from Mac Mansour. How long it take to train an, uh, on that system? Um, okay. I'm not sure which system you mean. And I can uh, go through this just fast. Question as well, do you uh, offer courses in your Krems uh, University for digital dentistry? <laughs> Okay, we don't have for special courses, uh, and that's not for sure. I'm, I'm head of the aesthetic master. So uh, we have a master course for aesthetic dentistry. Um, and then we, of course, do a lot of uh, things like uh, virtual smile design and so on and so on. But we don't have a special course just on digital dentistry. Um, working on the system and training on the system, um, a navigated system. So real-time intraoral navigation is especially teamwork. Um, and this will take you just approximately four to six weeks until you're optimized. Using surgical guides, I would say, let's say five to 10 times of usage. And here is very important to have a dental technician who's experienced because there's a lot with, let's say, offset and uh, where to place and so on and so on. And uh, if you're aware of that, then you will get uh, very good results very fast. If you want to do this all for yourself, I would say four to six weeks at least until you know your printer, the offset, the scanning precision and so on and so on. So this six, depending on the system and who, who's in your team. So it's very important to have a good team here. Yeah, then there's the next question from a friend of mine from Vaslav from Switzerland. Why we need an intraoral scanner if we get all the data from CBCT? Good question. Thank you so much. There's a system on the market uh, who said we don't need this anymore. Um, the accuracy of a CBCT scan is very, very strongly correlated to restorations and artifacts. So the precision of a CBCT scan. Uh, is about 100 to 120 microns, 150 microns. So it's not accurate enough to produce a splint today. But um, you can have, for example, uh, I only know Plameca because they have a pattern on that. If you have an impression and you have a CBCT from this impression, you can directly produce your surgical guide on that. And this works quite well. We tried this clinically. Um, exactly, that's a very good question. Um, I wanted uh, to ask this during the presentation as well. Is it possible to produce final restoration before the surgery? Because we um, have this question always uh, full guided. What means full guided? Does it mean the prosthetic is already on the desk before the implants are placed? I think this no. is a very good, nice question. Yeah. Yes, uh, even if we take the best 
the best systems available on the market and just a single crown restorations we have deviations from one and a half to five degrees of variation they're very good research from basel university and this means that for final restoration honestly i would not prefer to have the final restoration in place but i know that some people clinically do they have a very big spacer and overcome this spacer with resin which i don't prefer because i don't want to have so much resin in my restora final restoration so personally i would not recommend even though knowing that some people do put it this way very carefully okay one almost last question how do you fix surgical guides with fully dental patients screw <laughs> Yeah. Very, screw. very simple. I, Put a screw. Yeah. So okay. uh, in, in our heads, this is a very big procedure. But if you have a, a very good screw uh, system, yeah, uh, then if it's a self-drilling, self-cutting screw, it takes you five seconds and it's in. So I don't, I don't take long thinking about this, this idea because um, it's very fast especially in the upper jaw, just in the median suture, tuck, 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 and then you're done. So not a big deal. Okay, um, then there's maybe the uh, one last question. Can we have uh, the email uh, yes. um, after this um, um, presentation? I think we, we, we have the email, uh, anyway, it's online. I'm going to show them in a second from, from TRI side. We pass all the questions also to uh, Professor Fonse if the, uh, the is needed and also you got a video uh, recording of this uh, presentation and um, yeah that's maybe answering this question and let me share quickly my um, um, slide again and so far I don't see more questions popping in so um, well there's one more which I think is very very easy to answer and thank you so much Mr. Richter uh is the digitalization proceeding after coronavirus absolutely so transporting impressions from a to b uh infection rates from a to b uh and speed yeah so i have the scan and i can talk to my dental technician right away this is so much upbringing our digitalization today that uh, i can sim simply answer this question yes yes I think so too. Okay, um, thank you very much again, uh, Professor Fonse, for this really interesting uh, presentation. Uh